Welcome to another video. This is a redo of a previous video that I incorrectly copied because when I copied the first the question the first time, I had sign 1 minus x on top and somehow it did not present the major problem that this problem is supposed to present. So now I am giving you the original problem and I'm going to solve it using the original reasoning. By the way, if you watch the previous video, we got 0 and negative 2. This one is going to give us 0 and 2, and we're supposed to pick the highest non-negative value of the solution, and we still are not allowed to pick 2. You have to pick 0. 0 is still the biggest. You can't pick 2 because 2 does not work in the context of limits. Let's get into the video. So, all I'm going to do is simplify, rewrite, and take the limits, okay? If you watched the previous video, this should not be new to you. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rationalize this because plugging in x equals 1 um, will not work for me. I'm going to end up with 0 over 0 in the middle here, and here I'm going to have some um, 0 over 0 again. So, it's going to be more like two indefinite situations, indeterminate rather, situations. So let's rewrite this and then do all the substitutions. And here I'm going to try to simplify 1 minus x by rationalizing it, or I might as well write the top as difference of two squares. Okay, now, so here, 1 minus x over 1 minus square root of x can be written as 1 minus square root of x squared over 1 minus square root of x. So that was the idea I used in the previous video. And you see, this is the same thing as this difference of two squares, which is 1 minus square root of x. So I can take this out and take this out. So here we go. And you end up with 1 plus square root of x. So that is what the exponent is going to be when I get down here. Oh, let me just write it. Um, 1 plus rad x equals 1 over 4. Okay, remember the mission is to find a. Now, there's one more adjustment I want to make. So I know x is approaching 1, but because I know some of those, listen, we know this, that the limit as let's use theta approaches 0 of sine theta over theta equals 1. And I intend to use that idea to solve this because it's just super fast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace x minus 1 with theta. So I say let theta be x minus 1 so that um, I can say that so theta plus 1 is equal to x. Now notice this that as x goes to 1, theta goes to 0 right? As x goes to 1, theta goes to 0, even from here. So we've gotten another way to express this thing here. So we can go here and say this is the limit. Instead of saying as x goes to 1, we say as theta goes to 0. And what we have here is now um, a times theta plus sine theta over theta plus sine theta. And the new exponent, let's write the new exponent here. Um, let's write it this way. It's going to be, what did we say x is? x is theta plus 1. So this is going to be 1 plus square root of theta plus 1. And everything is 1 over 4. Okay, one more thing, because I need this guy. So I'm going to divide every sine expression by theta. So I'm going to divide Everything I see here, divide the top and bottom by theta. It doesn't change anything if you divide the top and the bottom by the same thing. So if I divide this by theta, divide this by theta, divide this by theta, divide this by theta, I end up with the limit as theta goes to zero of, now the expression is now a over theta, which leaves me with a. This is now sine theta. Oh wait, there's a minus. Ooh, come on, there's a minus here over theta divided by theta divided by theta is going to be 1. So we got 1 plus sine theta 
over theta, okay? And everything is raised to one plus square root of theta plus one, and it's still one over four. And here is where the most amazing thing happens. Because now if we take the limit of each of these, what's gonna happen is that this is gonna be, remember this limit is equal to one, this is gonna be one, this is gonna be one, and this is gonna become zero plus one, which gives you one, and minus a plus one over one plus one, and this limit is gonna end up becoming two, which is equal to one over four. This is precisely what we did in the previous exercise. If we take the square root of both sides, we're gonna end up with, let's write it as um, one minus a over two will be equal to plus or minus one half. If I multiply both sides by two, I'm gonna get one minus a equals plus or minus one. So that a will be one plus or minus one. So a equals zero or two. Okay, so these are the two options that we have. Now that we have a equals zero or a equals two, let's try the two numbers here. If you try a equals zero, it means a equals zero is gonna give you, this is gonna go away. So what you have here is just this divided by this. And notice, oh, there's a fact. Sine theta over theta is always positive because if theta is negative, then sine theta is gonna be in the same direction. There's gonna be a negative here in front of it because it's an odd function and then the two negatives will cancel each other out and then you still end up with a positive function. So sine theta over theta is always positive. So it's gonna be positive, zero plus positive over one plus positive, everything is positive. So you have a positive base being raised to an exponent that's not an, a whole number, okay? Because there's a problem. You see, minus anything, let's say minus one, as long as there's a number that is negative, if you raise it to a power that is not an integer, if it's a fraction, okay, there's gonna be a problem. A fraction, especially if there's a possibility of the base being an even base, let's say 1.2. See, negative one raised to 1.2 is not a real number. Okay, it's a complex number. So if you wanna take a limit if, and the function has to be continuous up to the limit, then you cannot do this because any negative number raised to the power of a fraction, so negative one raised to power two over three, this does not work. Now, if you're gonna have decimals, you can see this limit we're taking is one plus, because we're taking limits, the values are gradually approaching zero. So here under the square root sign, you might be having, um, Maybe it is 0 0.5 plus one, square root of 0 0.5 plus one. You take that square root, add it to one, it's gonna be two point something. Once you start having decimals, you cannot have a negative base. That is the reason why you cannot have a negative in here. And the only time you're gonna have a negative is if a is two, because if a is two, then you're gonna have minus two plus some value, which is possible that it might end up being overall a negative number. So we can't take those chances and that's why we cannot accept two as a correct answer because we cannot have a negative base with an exponent that is not an integer because that guarantees that you can have an answer. But if it's not an integer, then any fraction that you're generating as you're approaching the limit is gonna cause the function to be discontinuous and no more real values, but just imaginary values. And that's the reason why we cannot accept two. So the largest non-negative value of A that we can have is zero. So two will cause a negative base. which leads to complex values. So if this function is all about real numbers, the way to go is A. Therefore, A equals zero is the largest
never stop learning. Fills to stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.